to bring. It's, um, it's actually a very difficult word for me to bring. But I had to step up and I had to bring it. Um, I, had a, I, I knew I was going to preach for two months already. And well, since we, before we went to New York in July. So I already had something, you know, to bring. And within this weekend, going back to New York, God kind of changed it. And I told Alex on the way back over here, I said, I said, man, I'm torn between two things. I don't know which one. And actually before I, but within the week, I, when I started on Wednesday, when I got home and I started, you know, I sat down and started preparing it, I, I was led to this one, to, to one of the two. And while I was getting ready today, I, I said, you know what? The first message was about God wants you, and God has you where he wants you, at the exact time he wants you, in, in whatever situation you are. So right now, I bring this message because God gave me this message because he needed it, and he gave it to me at the right time. So either way, um, I'm going to ask you guys to, to turn the Bible, your Bibles to Judges chapter 6. And jueces, capítulo 6. And I try to put a lot of the verses in Spanish up there, too. Amen. Y la palabra se lee en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this, go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. So, in the beginning of the year, when we were doing the whole month of prayer in January, cuando estábamos haciendo el mes de, de oración, Dios le dio una palabra a mi esposo. God gave a word to Alex. Oh, and it was on being the 300, right? That, um, and it was about Gideon. <clears throat> and he said, we need to be those 300. Well, a whole half a year has passed. We're already in August. More than half a year has passed. And God brings this word back to me. But in a, it's kind of, it's going to elaborate a little more on these soldiers. And the title that I put is The Soldier of Valor. So, in chapter 6, God refers to Gideon as a man of valor in verse 12. And what, I'm going to go to the next slide. When we look at, yes, at what valor means, valiente, esforzado, decidido, vigoroso, los sinónimos, valor, valiente, valentía, coraje, nervio, atrevimiento, intrepidez, la audacia, el heroísmo. Put it in English. We're talking about valor. The synonym is, is bravery, courage, nerve, daring, fearlessness, boldness, heroism, backbone. That's what God tells Gideon he is. And today I'm kind of placing myself as a Gideon mm -hmm. and doing what God, what I feel God has called me, called me to do. So Gideon, Gideon, well, God sends Gideon in chapter 6 to go destroy the um, altar of Baal. And basically what the Israelites did, if we don't know the story, the Israelites went and they created an, an altar. They were worshiping an idol called Baal. And I was actually talking to the young girls about this yesterday. And God wanted to show that he is God, like always with the Israelites. He had to keep proving himself over and over again to the Israelites that he is God. So here is Gideon. God tells him, go ahead, right? And in verse 25, we can go to the next slide. God tells Gideon to destroy the altar of Baal, which was an idol the Israelites had created for themselves. Gideon knew that this would cause people to get very upset with him. 
He knew this would be a tough job to do and no good reaction would come from it. But that did not stop Gideon from doing what God had asked him to do. See, God will place us in uncomfortable situations and positions in life where we have to make a tough choice whether to follow God's command or our own desire. Gideon could not have possibly wanted to tear down the altar. As a matter of fact, in verse 27, it says Gideon feared the men of the city too much to do it by day. So he was scared to take on this challenge, so he did it by night. So when they woke up the next morning, here the altar was destroyed. And it couldn't have been an e something easy for Gideon to do. So he, that's why, he, so you know, sometimes God's also going to place us in those uncomfortable situations. Yes. So God is looking for men and women to take the stand and say, regardless of how difficult <clears throat> the task ahead of me might be or how uncomfortable it might make me, I will do it because God asked me to do it and it is what's right to do. Now, in this church, we are all serving God. We are all Christians. There is no doubt in my mind that you guys are following what God has called you to do. Because, first off, God wanted to save us. Dios quería salvarnos. So, nosotros ya dimos ese paso, que, lo que Dios quería, y nosotros no entregamos nuestra vida a Dios. So, we already did the first step. God wanted to save us, and that's why we are, and we, we allow God to save us. Now, next slide, Nene. Now, we go to, that's the first story. Now, we go to chapter 7. We're going to hear about how after he destroyed this, this altar, now it was time for war. Now, God is sending him out to war. And in Judges 7, time for war. Okay, good. 7. Sorry. It shows us that early in the morning, God and God called him, and God and God told him to take. And he got a bunch of people. Go to the next one, minute. Those are just the verses. You guys can follow with me if you want in your Bibles. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. There were first 32,000 men came. Gideon gathered the 32,000 men. These were a lot of men. I could, I, you know, I, that picture is kind of small, whatever, but that's a bunch of men. And God said, uh-uh, this is too big. This is too big of, of an army to, to come. See, in our churches a lot of times, there's people that says, here I am, here I am. So God said, you know what? Those that are scared, tell them to go. So the ones that feared, lo que tenían miedo de go, para ir a la guerra, se fueron. La Biblia dice que 22 mil se fueron. Wow. De 32 mil. That's a lot of people. Feeling. <laughs> so I know that that's so So 22 mil gente se fueron. 22,000 people left, um, left because they feared. See, in our churches, a lot of times, we have those people that says, hey, I'm here, I'm going to do this, right? Actually, none of you guys are these people because you guys are sticking it out. You guys are still here. But there has been people that have walked into these doors and said, here I am, I want to do this. I'm, I'm willing to do this. And the minute and the second things get a little scary or a little uncomfortable, they decide to go and they leave. They flee just like those 22,000. So now there's 10,000 people left. So God says, hmm, that's still a little too big. See, God had a point to prove. Yo tenía un propósito, he had something to prove. Un punto que probar. So he said, you know what? Go take them and drink water. You can could, you could follow, follow through it in, in the Bible. So. Oh, actually, right, there was a point that I wanted to bring. How many people know people in the military? I don't know if you guys have ever come across people in the military, men that say, oh, I'm entering the military, and they enter the military just to, just to say, oh, I'm doing something. But their desire isn't really for the military. They're not, they're not meant for it. So the minute and the second it gets tough, they're like, oh, I can't stand the military. 
But now you have these other people that enter the military because that's their desire, that's their passion. So then you have these that just say, I'm just doing my four years and I'm, and I'm out. They don't care about the retirement, they don't care about anything else because the military is not for them. But then you have those that said, nope, I will give my life for my country. And they, the other ones just go for the special discount, right? The commissary, looking good, right? Just, and the name, you know what? Oh, wow, you're in the military, you went to boot camp? And see, that's what happens to a lot of people that come into the church. They like the idea of a church. They like the idea of coming to church and, and stuff. But then it gets scary and they go. So, Now, the 10,000 remain. These 10,000 men said, I'm not too scared. I'm in this and I'm going to fight. Tooth and nail to win. But the Bible shows us that not all 10,000 men were very wise. See, these 10,000 men I give credit to because they, they said, I, I'm not scared. I'm going to fight for, for what God wants me to do. But they weren't very wise. And th that's, the, that's the problem. And that was their problem. So... Gideon took all 10,000 of these men to drink water. And the Bible says 9,700 got down on their knees and began drinking while 300 cupped their hands with water and laughed like dogs. Now I started thinking, I'm like, I went to Alex and said, Alex, what, what does that mean? So we we're like, yeah, okay. And I even YouTube did see. And I compared myself to Kobe, my pastor's dog. And I compared how I would drink water and how Kobe would drink water. And how I would drink water is I go to the fridge, fill it up with ice, get it nice and cold, crushed ice because it can't be cubed. Some people like cube, I don't. Fill it up with water, take my time, and oh man, when that water goes down my throat, like it tastes good. So now Kobe, on the other hand. He goes to his little bowl, and sometimes he's, if you make the slightest bit of noise, Kobe's looking, right? That's how dogs are. They're looking. Domingo, está poniendo atención? Because you were excited about this. El perrito, ¿verdad? Cuando toma agua, está pendiente, ¿verdad? Pero cuando uno está tomando agua, uno coge su tiempo, ¿verdad? So eso mismo pasó con, con estos soldados. Había uno que cogieron su tiempo, se arrodillaron a tomar la agua, pero había los otros 300 que dijeron, vamos a avanzar, tengo que, tenemos una guerra, ¿verdad? Tenemos una guerra, I have a war to go to. And they took their, and they, they, were, they were quick about it. In the same way, there's a lot of us who say, okay, I'm ready to fight. But then we get, these, we get distracted, we, we take our time with things. That, and we say, I'm not going to abandon you like the other 20,000. That, that's what they, they'll say. But when it comes to the tasks of ministry, um, that ministry calls, they find ways to make it convenient for themselves. Mm -hmm. cuando, el, cuando la iglesia le pregunta, hay, hay gente que dicen, yo estoy aquí, te voy, voy a ayudar el ministerio. Yo soy un soldado para la, para la obra de Dios. Pero cuando llega el tiempo de pelear, Ellos, ellos dicen, espérate, tengo que, que coger mi tiempo, tengo que acomodarme primero, tengo que hacer lo que es más fácil para mí en el momento. Como esos hombres hicieron cuando se doblaron a tomar la agua. See, when the day has been stressful or tiring or long and you decide you're going to stay home rather than make it everything possible in attending your church services or Bible studies, you are making it into what's convenient. Mm -hmm. Cuando uno está cansado de un día largo y ha estado haciendo todo, y se, dice, tú sabes que hoy me voy a quedar en casa porque tengo un sueño que no lo soporto. Eso es haciendo lo que está más conveniente para ti yes. en el momento. Yes. Y eso es lo que nosotros hacemos. O cuando la iglesia está preguntando por ayuda financieramente, con su ofrenda o su diezmo, y tú dices, lo voy a dar cuando pueda, 
pero cuando no pueda no lo, no lo tengo. Ahí tú lo estás haciendo, tú, tú estás haciendo lo que es conveniente para ti en el momento, ¿verdad? Porque si no era conveniente, tú, tú diera tu hombro, right? When you say, I'm, um, when the church is asking for financial help with your tithes and offerings, and you're saying, I will give it to you when, it's, when I can, but when I can't, I just can't. You're making it into what's convenient for you because it's very difficult to get into that uncomfortable situation. Or, when you don't go out your way to invite others to your church or speak to people about your church or simply your God for whatever reason. Cuando ni te molesta de invitar a la gente adentro de la iglesia, quizá te da miedo. Tú lo estás haciendo porque es conveniente para ti, porque te va a incomodar. You're going to get uncomfortable to invite somebody to the church. Amen. When you take care of your own personal business matters, like cleaning your home, going out of town, any chance you get, not caring the effect it will have on your church, or going shopping, you're making it to what's convenient for you. Cuando tú coges tu cosa personal, tu, tu propio antojo de ir para la, hacer compra en vez de ir para su culto, o quizá ir a vacaciones, no importando las la veces que tú vas para las vacaciones, no importando lo que está pasando en la iglesia, ahora lo está haciendo a lo que es conveniente para ti. Porque estamos haciendo lo que, lo que yo quiero hacer primero y no lo que la iglesia necesita en el momento. Say amen When, anyway. It's, it's quiet and I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> When something presents itself and you truly can't make it to your service, although you have responsibilities in your church and you don't make sure your responsibilities are delegated to someone else, you are making it into what's convenient for you. Cuando tenemos una responsabilidad en la iglesia y no podemos, de verdad, esta vez no podemos atender por una cierta razón, pero tú no coges el tiempo para asegurarte que tu responsabilidad está... Uh, Delegado. Está, Delegado. Delegado. Lo está convirtiendo a lo que es conveniente para ti. Porque no cogiste un segundo para asegurarte que la iglesia todavía iba a seguir funcionando bien sin ti. Amen. Yo tenía que ir para lo de mi papá este, este fin de semana. And is it, am I right or wrong, Jessica and Elizabeth? I called, the, I texted both of you to make sure you guys had devotional. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, for Sunday? For Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Y las dos, yo lo vi en YouTube, las dos hicieron buenísimo. And I was happy, porque tú sabes qué? No de, tiene que depender de Miriam. Para, para hacer un devocional, yo sé que tengo las dos cantantes que cantan mejor que yo, que lo podían hacer, pero me aseguré que las dos sabían. So, a veces, nosotros no hacemos eso en la iglesia, porque no es conveniente para coger un segundo a, a asegurarme que la iglesia está funcionando bien. Amen. When it's easier to point the finger on what should or shouldn't be, be because that's simply how you feel and not what the scripture says, again, you are making it into what's convenient for you. Cuando tú coges, cuando tú estás señalando lo, en lo que eso debe de ser así, o eso no debe de ser así, ahora lo estás haciendo para lo que es conveniente para ti, porque... A ti no te gusta, la escritura no dice nada de eso, pero a ti no te gusta como eso es. So eso, eso me pone mal, eso me pone como, me está poniendo un poquito como incómodo, porque es lo que es conveniente para ti. When we don't attend an English service because we don't speak, speak the language, you're making it into what's convenient to you, for you. Cuando no asistimos un culto de inglés, porque yo no hablo inglés, yo no entiendo inglés, lo está haciendo por lo que es conveniente para ti, porque Dios no sé, yo no yo entiendo nada. Y lo mismo para la gente que, va, que hablan inglés y no vienen a los cultos de español como uno como hoy. When you go and eat, and that goes for the English speakers, that when you don't, don't come to the certain services that they speak Spanish, you're making it into what's convenient for you. Tú sabes, hoy mismo, yo no me sabía ninguna de las canciones que el hermano Domingo cantó, y no tenía las palabras. 
Pero el hermano Domingo se gozó con esas canciones, ¿verdad? So, ¿Quién soy yo para decir, así no se debe de hacer un devocional? No debe de cantar eso coro, coro del, del, um, del tiempo viejo. No de, no, no, ese no, no es mi deber. Mi deber como cristiano, mi deber como miembro de esta iglesia, como familia con ustedes, es estar aquí, aunque no sé las canciones, aunque Jessica no sabe ni, ni papa de lo que tú estás hablando aquí al frente, ella hace el esfuerzo de estar aquí porque ella sabe que ella quiere apoyarlo a ustedes. Y con ese apoyo nosotros nos sentimos más cómodos. Pero cuando decimos, yo no entiendo el inglés, yo no entiendo el español, I don't understand English, I don't understand Spanish, I'm not going to those services, we are making it into what's convenient for us. Amen. Amen. When we decide to come late or leave early from a church function instead of helping out and set up and clean up, you are making it into what's convenient for you. Cuando decidimos... Voy a llegar un poquito tarde porque no quiero ayudar, tú sabes, poniendo la silla para, tú sabes, para una función en la iglesia. O me voy a ir temprano antes que me digan que fregue los trastes. Lo estoy haciendo porque es conveniente para mí. I'm making that into what's convenient for me. Because I don't want to do that. Yo voy a decir, I'm going to share something. Cuando yo fui para la iglesia de mi papá, de mi papá de verdad, que, me, que yo dije, wow, lo están tratando a ellos como rey, como el presidente de los Estados Unidos aquí. Y yo le traje un mensaje a ustedes una vez de, de uh, cómo tratar a sus pastores. Y no es porque son mis suegros, no es por eso, es porque la Biblia nos manda hacer esto con los pastores. Y yo me gocé. Porque yo vi cómo trataron no solamente a mi papá y a mi mamá allá en New Jersey, pero cómo trataron a sus pastores. Ellos no, de una iglesia que tiene un piso abajo y después oh, un piso a, arriba, ellos sentaron la familia completa mía, que eran como 24, 25 gente, arriba con aire acondicionado, lo que ellos comían abajo sin aire. ¿Verdad? Y ellos... Nos, nos subieron arriba y ellos vinieron del basement al primer piso con la comida a, a, arriba y seguían bajando y subiendo a, a servirnos la comida, a darnos la soda, a traernos la, el bizcocho. Y tú sabes que es triste, hermano, y lo voy a ser sincera, porque así es como Dios me hizo y de verdad... Yo le dije a mi esposo, wow, no, a mi, mi esposo un día... Yo dije, wow, en la iglesia mía sería mi pastora sirviendo. Y eso no es justo. La pastora mía sería la que... La que y, o si no fuera ella, es porque nosotros teníamos que decirle a la gente, mira, si me puede servir. Mira, puede servir allá. Pero de que alguien diga, tú sabes que lo tengo, pastora, tú te sientas, tú, tú no haces, tú no hagas nada, Fa, la familia del pastor, ustedes se sienten, no. Pero yo como que no, no como que nunca he visto un tratamiento así. Y yo dije, oh my goodness, wow. Y me, y me puse feliz por, por mis pastores, pero después me puse triste porque vi que eso se debe de hacer en todos los lugares. Y es rara la vez que uno ve, ve algo así. Y a veces, y no, 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 quiero, no es que quiero decir que ustedes son 